Welcome to Module 5, Lesson 26, Compare Fractions Greater Than 1 Using Benchmark Fractions. Yes, we're back to comparing fractions, but this time the fractions are greater than 1, they're mixed numbers, and you're going to use benchmark fractions. As a reminder, there were three main benchmark fractions we focused on in fourth grade. The first one is recognizing that a half is where you have a numerator that is half the denominator. Two-fourths would qualify as a half, but one-fourth would not, because the number on the numerator is not half of the denominator. So it is less than a half. It's still important information that it's not a half. To indicate if something is more or less is very important. So if the number on the top is exactly half of the denominator, you do have half. But if it is less than the denominator, you have less than half, and of course, if it is more than half, uh, more than half the denominator, then it's more than half. It's very important. For a whole, the two numbers on the uh, top and bottom, numerator and denominator, have to be exactly the same. So 3 over 3 is a whole, just like 301 over 301 is still a whole. If the numbers match, you have a whole. And of course, if the numerator is larger than the denominator, then you have a fraction that is now more than 1. So finding out if something's more than one, if it is exactly at one, or how it compares to a half is very handy information for finding fractions and comparing fractions. It's pretty nice. I mean, we're back to number lines, but look at these directions. Plot the following points without measuring. I mean, they do not want you to get tick marks into eighths and sixths and fourths and find exactly where these numbers go. They want you to do this without measuring. So we have a number line given to us, 7, 8, to 9. So I, uh, we're assuming that these numbers fit somewhere in there. Now remember from our previous lesson that these improper fractions could be divided with the middle line and turn into mixed. So how many 8s fit into 65? Well, 8 times 8 is 64. So 8 fit in there with a remainder of 1 one more makes 65, and the denominator stay the same. So 65 eighths is really 8 and 1 eighth. Now 8 and 8 eighths would be 9. Right? 8 and 8 eighths would make 9. It'd be another whole. But we have 8 and only 1 eighth. So 8 and 1 eighth would just barely be a little bit past this 8. I might have even went too far. But that's a close estimate, and you could label it. Oh, don't label it, sorry. Don't label it your mixed number. Can I erase that? Please label it the number that you were supposed to solve, 65 eighths. 65 eighths is what goes here. Now, we just changed it so we could solve it. Let's try changing this one. Now, remember in previous lessons? Oh, wait. I'm going to leave it like this. 8 and 5 sixths isn't it really close to 9? Isn't 8 and 6, 6 a 9? So 8 and 5, 6 is extremely close. So I will say that it's really close to 9. And I would call this 8 and 5, 6. And then the last one I would divide as well. I would go, hmm, well, where's my, there it is. 29 divided by 4. 4 goes into 29. 7 times making 28. But one more would make 29 out of 4. 7 and a fourth. So this one I could estimate really well. 7 and then a fourth the way towards 8. That is where I would indicate my 29 fourths. All right? And since we've now placed those there, we can compare the following fractions. How does the 8 and 5, 6 face against the 65 eighths? Well, here's the 8 and 5, 6, clearly larger than this one here. So you could say greater than. And 29 fourths, that one was way back here compared to 65. Oh, then 65 eighths is larger here. Explain how you pr pr plotted the problems. I kind of just did. I explained them out loud. You could say, I'm not going to type it out. So you need to explain each one. How did you figure these out? Well, 8 and 5 sixths is almost a 9, right? 65 eighths is 8 and an eighth, which is just a little bit more than 8. And then same for the third one. 
29 fourths is a little more than 7, so it goes here. That's it. All right? Now, as you go on to the last page, they want you to compare and explain again with each one. So let's try a few of those strategies. Number, uh, letter A. Right away, both of them are a little more than 5, right? 5 and then some, 5 and then some. So really, you're just comparing a third to three-fourths. Now, you could draw. You could say, you know, um, a third versus three-fourths, and color in, and clearly, three-fourths is larger, and that would be your explanation, okay? On problems like B, I have eighths versus Fourths, those don't match to compare really well, but four could double to eight. So I would double it, change it to an eight, and if you double the bottom, you have to double the top. So this is 24 eighths versus 25 eighths, so 25 eighths would be more. And to explain, I would say uh, 12 fourths is 24 eighths, which is less, or 25 eighths is more. So using, using common denominators is a great strategy. I would do that again here. Fifths versus tenths. Double the fifths to tenths. Double the three to six. So five and six fifths or five and five fifths? Well, five and six fifths would be more. Now let's take a look at these other fractions here where the denominators don't match too well. However, I could look at maybe making them mixed. I could divide, right? Isn't 18 divided by 6 just a 3? So this is 3 verses. Now, does 4 go into 12 more than 3 times? Uh, sorry, does 4 go into 17 more than 3 times? Yes, 4 goes into 17 4 times. So I'm not going to even finish my problem. I know that this is larger. And I would say, um, for my explanation, 18 divided by 6 is 3, and 4 goes into 17 more than 4 times. Done. All right? Now here, I have 6 versus 6, so it's really just 3 fourths versus 3 fifths. Now these are common numerators. Now in this situation, I could think, if I had 3 slices of a pizza that only had 4 slices, or 3 slices of a pizza that were cut into 5 slices, I know I would have bigger slices and therefore more here. So you could say you compared with common numerators. And then for F, I'll do one last one. We have 33 sixths versus 34 sevenths. I would divide in this situation as well. 6 goes into 33 5 times. 7 goes into 34 4 times. So 5 and something is more than four and something. So therefore this is bigger. And I would say exactly what I just said in words. I would put six goes into 33 more than seven goes into 34. That's enough. All right. Good luck with comparing fractions with these much larger numbers than before. Um, I think you'll do great, but if you have any questions, see me and I'd be glad to help. Thanks.